Okay, so we've made the the base grid for the maze, but it doesn't actually make a maze yet because we haven't removed any of the walls. So we need to script that. This is the third part, I think. Um, if you haven't watched the previous two, you should probably go back and watch them in order to make this grid here. Uh, yeah, I don't, is this part two or three? I'm not sure. Uh, whatever. Um, so made the grid. Then we're gonna make a new function in maze called maze dot draw. Uh, sorry, I messed up. Maze dot draw. Oh wait, what am I doing? Yep, equals function. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna actually draw out the maze here. So after we create the grid, we'll do maze dot draw, and we need we need to pass in the grid here as a parameter. Okay. So we need to create some variables before we do this. This one's probably going to be a longer, a longer part than the others. Uh, so the current, local current, is basically which cell we're on right now. Local unvisited cells equals calls times rows. So it'll be ten times ten for me. It's a hundred, and I'm going to use this thing called a stack. I'm going to call it a stack. It's just the array. An empty array to begin with, anyway. So, the current uh, cell, the one we start at for the maze. Well, I'm going to start at 1, 1. Current equals grid 1, 1. Which is going to be at the top left. You could really put this anywhere. As long as it exists, obviously, in the maze. Um, I could do like two two three 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 two. I'm just gonna start at one one because that's probably where you would start in a normal maze. And we need so while unvisited cells is greater than one, greater than zero. Do but we're gonna need to wait so it doesn't break. Uh. So this current. Current or visited equals true because we just visited this cell. As you can see up here, it has a, vis a visited sort of property, which it was false, but we're going to make it true, so that the maze not in so that the algorithm knows not to go over it again. Uh, and then, going to make this actually. We're going to make it look green. So that it doesn't, so it's easier, it's easier, it's easier to see. So you can set to any color you want. So brick color dot new. Uh, I think mine was green before, bright green, oh, actually bright green. Um, and so this is only gonna check the cur the first cell, because we haven't given it any other cells yet. So, what are we going to do? If we run this, um, probably the first one's going to go green. Hopefully, anyway. Yep. So, we haven't actually started looping through yet, but we've visited the first cell. We're going to need to. check. So oh, let me run the game. As you can see, so we start at the first cell. We need to check if it has any neighbors. By neighbors, I mean well, the possible neighbors in this situation are this one, this cell here, or this cell here, because we're not having it, so it can go diagonally or anything. So there's only two possible options here. So we need to check if the cell to the right of it or the cell below it is actually. Well, we need to check if it's actually there, and if it's um, been visited already or not. Because we don't want to go over anything that's already been visited. So, 
gonna make another function, but we're gonna come back to this draw one in a sec. Okay, I forgot where I was, but um, what we need to do is we need to pick another function, but we're going to come back to this one later. Um, we're going to call this function check neighbors. So function maze. Yeah, this tutorial is going to be probably going to be quite long. Check neighbors. We're going to need to give it a grid. Oh, let's create an empty array. Neighbors. an empty grid. Uh, okay, here's the probably annoying part to write out. Uh, so we're going to check if it actually has any neighbors. So the next cell it will move on to is equal to current, the current cell check neighbors. And the grid. We need to give it the grid. Okay. So in this function. We need to check if there's a cell below it, above it, whatever. So what we're gonna do is... Okay, this is gonna take a long time to write out. But if grid self.x so if, you know, I exist, this cell exists, and grid self.x self dot y and basically we need this here to check that it exists we need both of them and grid self dot x grid oh sorry grid self dot x self dot y and here's where we're checking if it's uh below below us above us yeah, above us um so if there's one above us and um, this one that's above us Let's copy and paste that dot visited oh, sorry um, I need to think about this, hold on uh, sorry, and it's not visited yeah then yeah, it's gonna take a long time uh, so if it's not visited, then you know we basically need to insert that into this empty table here. So table dot insert neighbors. Let's put it in neighbors grid. Uh, self dot x self dot y take away one. So we insert the one that we're gonna. If there's one there above us, we insert it into the potential neighbors array here. If it's not, it's just not gonna run this. So Alright, let's copy and paste that and check. So let's check minus x, minus 1 on the x instead. Check minus 1. And then don't forget to change this down here. So we need to, we've done this for above us. To the left, to the left of us. Uh, so we can do below us next. So if self dot x, self dot y, and self dot x, self dot y plus one. So it's kind of like the opposite of the first one, to be honest. So probably should have copied that one. And not. So dot x so dot y plus one, then copy this here. 
we're gonna copy the second one we need. So if self dot x, self dot x, self dot y, self dot x plus one, and self dot y, self dot x plus one, and then copy this. Okay, so that should hopefully. Um, give us the well insert the na the possible neighbors into the table. So if the number of neighbors is greater than zero, then so if there's even any neighbors, uh, the chosen one is equal to neighbors. And we just need to. We're gonna do a random neighbor. Uh, one, the number of neighbors. So this is this is just gonna select a random one from the neighbors uh, array. I'm gonna return that. Uh, return chosen. If not, so if there is any neighbors, return nil. Oh, return. Nail. So that's the check neighbors function done. Uh, I'm gonna leave it there for this tutorial, but it's it's almost done. We just need to I should see what let's see what happens when we run this one. Okay, we've got an error. Attempt to index nil with number. Okay, I see what the problem is here. Basically, we need to remove this self dot y, and we need to remove this self dot y. I think anyway. Well, let's try. Oh, not that one. Though. Uh, these, the ones here. Yep. Okay. So let's try and oh, I just. Did I... Okay, I think that works. There's no errors, but it's not doing anything. So, let's fix this. Let's do, do some debugging. Let's print neighbors. See if it even prints anything. Okay, as you can see, it is giving us two neighbors to choose from. And they have all the values here. Um, Oh, it's because we never did anything with it. <laughs> uh. Okay. Yep. So, if there is neighbors, if next cell. Oh, sorry. If next cell, then the next cell dot visited is true. Unvisited cells take away one. Oh, minus equals one. So we're just taking away one from the unvisited cells. And next cell dot base. Basically, we're gonna make this green. Um, dot base to break color. So yeah, we'll make that green. Um, And then we need to remove the bulls. So I'm going to make a separate function here. I need to remove the bulls of the current and the next cell. And also current is equal to next cell. So remove bulls. We need to make this function. Let's make it down here. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna do this in the next tutorial. I'll finish it off. There's only gonna be one more after this.